Hi, welcome to Arissa Gets It Together. I'm Arissa, and this week I'm going to be talking about my TBR, like to be read pile, how I organize it, some of the best books I've read recently, and how I'm planning for the month ahead when it comes to figuring out what I'm going to read. Today is Wednesday, September 23rd. I just started reading The Night Swim by Megan Golden. It is a book of the month club book. I think it's from one of the recent months actually, which is great. It means I'm on top of it. Um, I'm like two chapters in. It's like true crimey, kind of like if Brock Turner meets Serial, as far as I can tell, you know, two chapters in. But last night I finished reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Um, I'd actually had a digital arc of it since um, March. And I finally got to it because it comes out on October 6th and I loved it. Like it was so well written. It was so compelling. The prose was beautiful. The pacing was like perfect to ruminate in. And I'm so excited for it. And I hope it's a book of the month club pick. And I hope like a celebrity book club picks it and all that stuff. But I'm a little skeptical because it's not a big five publisher and therefore like it might not get picked for as many things. That makes me sad because it was so good. So I do read really quickly. Um, it's just a gift I've always been given. Like still to this day could pass an AR test on like the books I read, you know? Um, I'm not a skimmer, that's like a whole thing. No, I just read quickly, but I take it all in. I'm also really good at knowing what I like to read. Um, so you'll hardly ever see me DNF a book or rate it like less than three stars just because I know myself and I can usually tell by looking at a book whether I'm gonna like it or not. I also um, space out my reading so that I'm reading different genres and not reading like six romance novels back to back because then I'll like compare them or forget what was what and it's just super confusing so I like to spread it out. So because I finished Addie LaRue last night I'm gonna read The Night Swim today and then let's see I don't remember what's next but I feel like it's oh after that, I'm going to read Founding Brothers, like a nonfiction Joseph Ellis book. Every month, I make a list of what I'm going to read. A couple different places, honestly, on this board behind me and in my notebook. Um, this board behind me has like my goals and plans for the month. So I plan like what I'm going to read, what I'm going to watch, any goals I have, and mark down any important dates. Um, I use a, like a handwritten notebook. It's not a bullet journal, but it's closer to that than a planner, I guess. It doesn't have dates or anything. I make like a to-do list for the week each week and like give myself eight or ten tasks a day. It just kind of depends week to week. Um, but then I will plan all the books I'm going to read for the month. Let's see if I can find my September one. I have to like sit down at home and do it and think about both like books I have on my bookshelf that I have not gotten to yet. Um, but then I also think of arcs that I have and so like upcoming books. I try to read them the month before. So like this month I was reading October releases. Next month I'll read November releases just so that I have time to write reviews and like when I inevitably fall behind, you know? Yes, so here is what I had for September. Ooh, I have read a couple of these. My original list in this planner here, notebook, it's a notebook, not a planner had 22 books on my TBR for September. I know I deviated from it a little bit because we got these new graphic novels at work I wanted to read and one other thing took me longer. But as of right now, I have read 12 of these books. Ah, doesn't sound great, but I definitely read some other books on the side, so I'm closer to 20 for the month. There were months where I was reading 30 books a month and there have been months where I read 12. It just really depends. Like the other day I read a book that was 927 pages. So that took a little bit longer. Um, I do make a calendar, like I use my GCAL and schedule out when I'm going to read certain books. So based on how long they are, if I have to work or not, uh, if I'm traveling, whether it's audiobook or ebook or physical book, I schedule out like how many days I'm allotting myself to read it. It's just a good mental thing to keep in mind. Like, ah, I often fall behind. Yes, that happened with Plain Bad Heroines. Not that it wasn't good. It just took me longer than I thought. Um, but so like for Addie Lou, I gave myself two days. For Night Swim, I'm giving myself like a day and a half. 
and hoping to read a graphic novel at work tomorrow evening. Um, hoping I finish this one because I read like true crime-ish books pretty quickly. Yeah. So it sounds kind of crazy to like schedule what I'm going to read. But you know, I, like part of making it on a goat calendar is that I can make adjustments. I write my lists in pencil most of the time so I can like change it. You know, stuff happens. You do your best to get a book done, but sometimes you either don't like it or it takes longer or you drop it or you didn't bring it somewhere. So real quick, I want to talk about some of the books I read in September and then preview what I'm hoping to read in November. I mean October. Another book of the month club pick, I read Big Friendship by Araminta Sow and Anne Friedman. It's super small nonfiction. It's about these two women. They have a podcast, but I haven't read it or I haven't listened to it and that didn't make me not enjoy this book. It's about like their friendship, especially in their early 30s and like growing together and, you know, finding a way to keep your friendship alive through years. Hit a little too close to home right now, but we're working on it. Um, I also read the Sarah Sanders memoir, you know, about what it is. It's actually one of the better written political memoirs I've read recently. Not that I'm of any illusion that she, you know, wrote the whole thing herself, um, but I thought it was pretty well done. It like does a good line between all the Trump memoirs that have been out where it's either like, he is the devil or he is our angel, God I've sent from above. And she's like kind of middle ground. Like she clearly likes the guy they left on good terms but she also like shares the like off the cuff jokes and like things that other people are like, okay. This is a book I've been meaning to get to for a while. Then it appeared in the Little Free Library and that was God's sign to me. The Moment of Lift by Melinda Gates. It's really about her charity work and like empowering women by, you know, talking about her stories around the globe. Kind of a rough read because it does talk about, you know, women around the world and how they are not being empowered. So, uh, Watch out for the stuff about female genital cutting and things like that. Um, but I thought it was a really interesting read. I really loved, she had this note in there about, you know, like finding a good partner who will like help you raise your children and so you can work too and all this stuff. And she talks about how, you know, their kid's school was kind of far away. So she asked Bill to do, you know, Bill Gates to do some of the carpool. And so he would take the kids to school a couple days a week. And she went a couple months later and was talking to one of the moms and was like, oh, there are a lot of dads here who do, you know, school pickup. And the mom was like, yeah, uh, we told our husbands if Bill Gates can take his child to school, so can you. Words of wisdom. A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow was a book, I think, I think this is an arc I'd gotten from Goodreads that I finally got around to. I enjoyed it, but not as much as I thought I would. I feel like the marketing and even like the blurbing wasn't totally accurate. But I enjoyed it pretty well. It was interesting. Quick read. YA. I'm really excited because this author has a Little Women retelling coming out next year, I think. So I definitely wanted to read this book beforehand. Another book that was like, fine. Wilder Girls. As we all know, I will pick up any book that says it's set at a boarding school. This one's set at a boarding school on like an island where they've all been exposed to this tox and there's like secret chemicals and government experiments, it seems. And it's like fine. The pacing is kind of weird. I didn't love the ending, but it's fine. Wilder Girls. And then here's a book that also was like, oh, I know that book is meant for me. Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. She also wrote The Miseducation of Cameron Post, which I actually DNF, like I didn't love it, but I don't like like 80s historical fiction. I know that's very specific. It just didn't vibe with me, but I really loved this as you can see. It's chonky. Um, that's why it took me a little longer than I anticipated to read. It's also, it's not that it's slow, it's just strangely paced and that like, you know, there's a past and present timeline. There's like a Hollywood movie being made. It bills itself as the favorite meets the haunting of Hill House, but I would probably call it more Blair Witch Project meets the haunting of Hill House. It does have humor in it, but not like the favorite humor. Like, yeah, there's like sapphic sexual tension. I guess it has that going on, um, but I enjoyed it pretty well. It's really long, but it's really intricate. And so that's cool. The two graphic novels I read at work that threw off my schedule a little bit were Nat Enough and Forget Me Nat by Maria Scriven. They were kind of in the vein of like Terry Liebenson meets Raina Telgemeier. You know, they're middle schoolers. No one's cool in middle school. So who, like, no one's writing middle grade novels about the cool girls, you know? It's always about, like, the other girl. So how are there still cool girls? I don't know. 
Um, they were really well done. I really like the illustration style. Um, and I'll probably read the next one. Another book I read this week or this month was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Um, I've been meaning to read this when I saw it as a book of the month pick. And then this book appeared in the Little Free Library. Again, a sign. But then I was a little behind on my other book, so I decided to listen to it as an audiobook. Well, listen, I love audiobooks. But this audiobook, given to me by the great people of Hoopla. So I didn't realize the book was British. That's on me for probably a variety of different reasons. And the narrator was very posh. The narrator also sounded like she was about 60 years old. And yes, I did Google it. She's 57. And not that there's anything wrong with being 57 or with 57 year olds narrating audiobooks in British accents. But this is a sexually explicit romance novel about a woman in her early 30s. And I did not need that read to me by a posh 57 year old British woman. And so I went to the paperback and I started the paperback about a hundred pages in and flew through it afterwards. It was explicit and just wonderfully like charming. <laughs> So I then literally ordered the second book because I had the first book and the other day I got approved for an arc of the third book, but I haven't read the second book. So it should be delivered today by 8 p.m. So let's think about the rest of September. Like I said, I'm reading The Night Swim right now and have it scheduled to be finished tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. I do have to go to the doctor in the morning. That's a good reading time. You know what I mean? Waiting rooms. And then when I get to work, I'll hopefully read When the Stars Are Scattered by, uh, by Victoria Jameson. It's a graphic novel. I think I just saw that it was long listed or whatever listed just came out for the National Book Award. Um, I love her illustrations. She did Roller Girl. <laughs> what more can I say? Um, and then Friday, my plan is to read Founding Brothers by Joseph Ellis. Um, I'm in the DAR here. Well, everywhere. I'm a daughter of the American Revolution and we love the founding and I've heard really good things about Joseph Ellis. I didn't get to read his book that we did for book club last year just because of my schedule um, and this one's short and sweet so I'm hoping to enjoy it. And then I'm going to read The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, another book of the month club pick that I've owned for a couple months but that I've heard like rave reviews about and so I'm really excited to read it. After The Vanishing Half I'm going to read an arc of a historical fiction book called The Daughters of Yalta about like the leading like world figures and their daughters at the uh, Yalta conference obviously don't know kind of what to get into there because it's something about like a story of war and love so I'm unsure where we're going here but we'll see and then scheduled currently for the last day of the month but we'll see I have an arc of the new graphic novel Oh My Gods yes it does come out in January but I want to go ahead and get it read um, however, it is on my computer, so that makes reading it a little difficult. Um, so I'm planning on doing that on a day I'm not at work so that I can be like, hello, the whole time. Now thinking ahead, the other day I spent a good chunk of my work time, and by that I mean like 35 minutes, thinking about what I'm going to read in October. And then of course, thinking about what I'm going to read in the future months. Because my goal is to uh, catch the heck up on my arcs. <sighs> And on my Book of the Month Club, I'm not going to let myself do Book of the Month Club in 2021 if I'm not significantly caught up by the end of 2020. So stay tuned for that because that will be a deep reflection. But thinking ahead to October, um, these are some of the books I have planned. Um, Hollow Pox by, Mor uh, not by Morgan Crow, by Jessica Townsend. It's Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Never Morgan Crow. The ne third and evermore book by Jessica Townsend. I love those books and I'm not going to compare them to the series that shall not be named, but I love them. And if you love that series, you will love this one even more. There are three books so far. This is the third. I did get the Alcrate Jr. box with a special edition, but then Edelweiss was like, here's a little arc as a treat. So I'm hoping to read that before I get the book in actually, um, just so I can have a good review. Up. Uh, I'm going to read Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Um, it was a book of the month club pick last month. And I the only one I've read by him was Beartown. And I liked it pretty well. But I did find that I like reading him in print more than in audio. Another arc I have is the new Cicely Von Zygeser adult book. And I loved me some Gossip Girl. So I cannot wait to read this. It's called Cobble Hill. 
it kind of was pitched to me like gifted school means like happy and you know it so i'm excited love her it's gonna be great um i'm also gonna read a hopeful heart which is a new juvenile fiction but longer it's like middle grade nonfiction book about louise may alcott obviously love louise may alcott love little women it will go on my shelf of many things related to that um it comes out october 6th though I probably could have gotten an ARC, but I was just going to order it for my shelf anyway. Another ARC I'm really excited for is The Project by Courtney Summers. She wrote Sadie, which blew my mind in like 44 different ways. So I'm really excited for that one. Um, I know it doesn't come out till February, but I don't want to put off reading it anymore so that I can like bask in it for a little while, you know. In an attempt to further get my Book of the Month Club stuff down, I'm going to read bringing down the duke and a rogue of one's own they're the first two and what will probably be a longer series but i can just read these two they're a little thicker than the usual like rom-com but i'm excited the historical strong women yay i will definitely want to read take a hint danny brown again it's arriving today but i'll probably read it next month because i've already got my plans scheduled um i really like chloe brown so i'll read it next month and then try to read actor age eve brown the month after but i may love Danny Brown so much I have to read it right then. I have an arc of the um, adult debut by Sanda Menon under the name Lily Menon, Makeup Breakup. I'm on her street team and do some work for her and I'm really excited about this one. It looks so good but I will try and pace it out from A Rogue of One's Own but I'm not like in a rom-com heaven. Also got A Million Junes by Emily Henry. It's YA but I really loved Beach Read and so I'm really hopeful that I'm gonna like this one too. And then speaking of Courtney Summers, I went to a Barnes and Noble for the first time in like a long time, not even like before quarantine, but before that the other day and I got cracked up by her. It's an earlier thing that they re-released, super short, but it looks good. I think it's set at a boarding school. If not, it looks like it should be and therefore that's enough for me. My DAR book club in October is gonna read the memoir Being Human, H-E-U-M-A-N-N -N -N, by Judith Human, a disability rights activist. I'm going to do the uh, nonfiction audiobook, I believe, just because I think that'll be better for like what I, else I'm reading. When I read, listen to an audiobook, I like it to be really different than the audiobook I'm or the physical book I'm reading. So I'll listen to it, the nonfiction audiobook and then read like a fiction book at the same time. Also have arcs of some like well-known authors that I really like. So I have Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White. I really liked, what was the first one called? Guinevere Deception. I liked that one a lot. Um, it had a great line in it about like he is the sun and when his sunlight is not shining on you, like you feel like you're in the dark all the time. And I was like, oh. Um, so I'll probably read that. It comes out in November, so I'll try to get it in. And sometime in October, also coming out in November by an author I really like is The Beautiful Wild by Anna Godberson. Like the Lux series changed who I was as a person. It was like my OG selection series, you know? Um, and I really liked her last historical fiction novel. I also love that she's been writing standalones and I got time for that. And then Eris Apparently by a Diana Ma. Doesn't come out till December but I'm considering it for some things noted and therefore I want to read it next month and just kind of get a head start on it. And then there is Girl Stuff, the new book by Lissy Harrison. I cannot quantify how much the Click series shaped me as a person, which is maybe not a good thing, but if you've ever met me, you know that's kind of right. I can't, I'm not even going to say like which characters I am. I'm just saying that that series shaped me irrevocably. And I'm really excited for it. I think girl stuff is like middle grade as well. So it's probably, you know, the modern thing of like, let's not be the mean girls, but we'll see. I'm going to read an arc of All This Time by Mickey Daughtry and Rachel Lippincott. She's the author behind Five Feet Apart, which I saw the movie and liked it. But the book was on like the New York Times bestseller list for like ever. And it really confused me because I don't actually know a single person that read it. But maybe I'll learn what it's all about with this book. Got this arc either from Goodreads or the publisher. I don't remember. Um, but I'll read that. It comes out. When does it come out? September. Well, we're getting there. That's what I'm expecting to read next month. Like, keep e like what I have scheduled. And then if things go faster, 
than expected or if I need to swap something out because I don't love it. I also want to read Miracle Creek, which is another Book of the Month Club book I've owned for forever. I actually don't think my copy is even Book of the Month Club, but it was a Book of the Month Club pick, so mentally I'm counting it. Um, and then I also want to do Super Fake Love Song, the new um, David Yoon. It's coming out in November. I think the date got pushed back a couple weeks maybe. So if I don't read it in October, I'll read it in early November. That's all I have today because I got to go read these books now. Um, I hope that helps. If you have any questions about reading or that, drop me a line. I'm on Twitter at Arissa Dameron, A-R-Y-S-S-A-D-A-M-R-O-N. And my blog where I talk about reading and all that stuff is arissareads.com, A-R-Y-S-S-A-R-E-A-D-S.com. Thanks.